What's up everybody, Trev Wilson here. Welcome back to the Bourbon Wrench. Today, we're gonna be talking about the top bourbons for beginners. Now, these aren't just bourbons for beginners. These are more so of bourbons that will help get you into it, help learn distilleries flavor profiles, help learn your palate, develop your palate, see what you like, see the proofs you're okay with, and help guide you throughout your journey. And it's gonna be a long journey, trust me. So what we're gonna do today is I'm giving you several bottles from, from multiple different distilleries, okay? And I'm gonna be giving you a bottle that's kind of the entry level one, kind of the one, hey, maybe try this one first. And the next bottle that I'll give you is kind of the stepping stone from that bottle. So once you've had that one or you've had it, you didn't like it or you like it, the next bottle will kind of tell you this is where I should go next or maybe I should go try a different distillery based on the flavor profiles that I was getting. So for beginners to get into it, it's gotta be accessible, it's gotta be good, it's gotta be affordable, and what I've tried to do is pick bottles that fit all of those categories. These should all be pretty easy to find with minimal to no hunting. Most of these should be at your store right now, just full shelf. So with that being said, let's just get right into it. But wait, before we go any further, be sure to check out today's sponsor, Into the AM. They're making super comfortable t-shirts, super awesome t-shirts, super cool logos. They got plain t-shirts. If you're not into the logos, they got everything for you. So click the link, go explore the website, and if you like what you see, use code BOURBONWRENCH to get 10% off your order. I'm hooking you guys up. So let's get into some budget bourbons with all that money you're saving over at Into the AM. So. The first distillery, first couple set of bottles we're gonna be talking about should come no surprise to my viewers. It's one of my favorites, my beloved Maker's Mark. So Maker's Mark 90 proof, it's a weeded bourbon. So this kind of is an introduction to weeded bourbon. If you've tried other bourbons, they're too spicy, they're too hot, whatever. This kind of tones that down a little bit. It is lower proof, so that should help and the fact that there's no rye spice in this should help too. So it's a good introduction, it's soft, it's approachable. I will preface this, I feel like this is a love-hate thing. You're either gonna love this guy or you're gonna hate it. Some people just cannot deal with the sweetness that this guy has to offer. This is melted candy in a glass. People say it's sickeningly sweet. I personally love sweet things. I want it sweet. I'm all for this guy. So if you try it, you don't really like it, that will help guide you into other weeded bourbons, maybe things like Larceny that aren't as sweet as, as Maker's Mark is. So stepping stone from regular makers. Either you say, hey, didn't really like that, or hey, I really like that, where do I go next? And I would offer Maker's Mark 46. This dude, easily in my top favorite bourbons ever. Easily my daily sipper. This guy's so good. They drop 10 French oak staves down in the barrel. They go throw it in a wine cellar, and that does some crazy stuff. And what you get is a totally different product than the regular makers. It kind of cuts back on some of the sweetness. Still really sweet, just not as sweet, not sickingly sweet. Uh, it has a little more depth, a little more character going on than the regular makers, so definitely recommend this guy especially if you didn't like the regular makers I would still recommend trying this one or if you love the regular makers then you definitely need to go get this guy it's only a couple dollars more it's a good stepping stone into the makers lineup and into weeded bourbon in general so next up on the list is one that I particularly am not crazy about but I know a lot of people rave about it they love it they say that it's just the best value, the hidden gem, the whatever. Just the best budget bottle you can find. And that's Evan Williams Bottled and Bond. Why I'm adding this is because there are enough people who rave and love it for me to say, yeah, you should probably try it. Especially if you're getting into it, you get to learn what a Bottled and Bond product is. You get to learn Heaven Hill's flavor profile. It's 100 proof, so we are kind of working our way up in the proof a little bit on some of these. Best part, it's only 15 bucks, so that's really what it is, and I think that's why a lot of people rave about it is because it is so cheap, and it still is a pretty good product. Don't get me wrong, I don't hate it. The Heaven Hill flavor profile is kind of not my favorite, especially in some of the cheaper bottles. So that's also why I'm trying to tell you this is it's a good way to learn 
these distilleries' flavor profiles. You get to learn what they have to offer. You get to see what you like, what your palate agrees with. So you can't go wrong at least trying it once, kind of learning it, putting it under your belt. So from there, this one's kind of controversial. I'll explain it later. We'll get, we'll get into the nitty gritty on this guy, okay? Because I'm kind of salty about it. But McKenna 10, single barrel, bottled in bond. This is kind of like the big brother to the Evan Williams bottled in bond. I'm sure Evan Williams bottled in bond is right at four years, what it has to be. This guy's 10 years, so we're starting to get into a little bit fancier per se. You're getting much more depth of flavor, much more character going on. You're getting away from just this young, youthful grain notes and you're starting to get some of the barrel influence. You're starting to get that age is taking, taking its toll on the whiskey. That's what we want. It's still pretty affordable and that's where my first kicker comes in. This bottle used to be super friggin' cheap. And then it won an award and then it disappeared. And then it showed back up and it's even more expensive. I will preface though that it probably was way underpriced when it was cheaper. For a 10 year product, the first bottle I bought was like $25. So it probably shouldn't have been marked down that low. We get spoiled on that price, so we kind of threw a fit when it disappeared and it came back at $45. That being said, I think even at 40, 45 bucks, this is just a good example of what a 10 year product should taste like what a higher quality product should taste like coming from Heaven Hill. It's a good example still. And again, I have to preface that if you can find it, this one is the one that kinda is the hardest one on the list to find. All right, next. One of my newfound loves of a distillery. I've always loved them. It's just lately, they're really stealing my heart. And it's a threefer. I'm giving you three bottles this time. The stepping stone just goes up and up on this one. And that is Old Forester. So the first two we're gonna be talking about, Old Forester 86 proof, Old Forester 100 proof. Both of these bottles are right around the same price. They're really cheap, they're budget, they're delicious for what they are, for sure. Old Forester 86. So if you're still kind of in that lower proof range, you say, okay, 100 proof's too hot for me, whatever. Or you just say, I wanna find an everyday sipper below 90, something that's just chill, easy to sip on. Try this dude. Very sweet. I get tons of banana on this one, and I love it. This Old Forester 86 is just bananas galore to me. And that's why I really like it. It's easily my favorite sub 90 proof bottle. Old Forester products are very sweet. So just know that going in. Again, this is a sweet one, but that'll help guide you. Okay, I like their level of sweetness more than theirs, or I want one of their products, but not as sweet, whatever the case may be. So going up from that one, the Old Forester 100 proof, again, around the same price. I would just say buy both of these at the same time. Work your way up to the 100 proof if you are still struggling with proof or whatever the case may be. Really good, really sweet again. On this one's where I start getting the Old Forester chocolatey note that I always get on some of their higher end stuff. I absolutely love it. It's, it's like a chocolate covered cherry or something. It's just, it's really, really good. You can find both of these guys on dang near every shelf ever. Why I wanted to give these two together is I think there is another product in the line that you've heard me talk about a lot. And it's because I friggin' love it and that's Old Forester 1920. Now don't get me wrong, I will not say this is the best one for beginners, okay? I'm not saying, hey, I really like Old Forester 86 proof, what should I do next? I would not tell you to go buy this guy, okay? I'm not saying that. This is kind of more of, okay, I've hit the 100 proof range, I really like it, I wanna try and start getting into some of these higher proofs, before you just jump straight to barrel proof. You might regret it. It might really hurt you, okay? It'll burn your soul. Definitely recommend hitting the middle, man. This guy comes at 115 proof. It's the perfect middle ground. It's full of flavor. You're still kind of getting barrel proof-esque notes. This bottle's probably the most expensive on the list, and I know for a beginner, seeing a bottle that's $60, it's hard to justify, especially when you're getting into it. But like I said, this is more of a stepping stone you say, where do I go next? Where do I go before I get into barrel proof? Where do I go after this 100 proof? 
for sure this guy and it's still high enough proof to kind of get you adjusted to going further on in your journey. Like I said, it's a long journey. You got a lot of whiskeys to try, a lot of proofs to get through, so it's not a race. This is not jump to the finish line. We're not jumping straight to Stag Jr., okay? You will die. The last distillery we're talking about on my list, the last couple of bottles, Wild Turkey. First bottle, Wild Turkey 101. For those of you who are like, oh my gosh, Wild Turkey 101? That was what we did in college. We were shooting college. That was the worst time of my life. Well, guess what, Bill? You need to go back and revisit this as Bill of today. Okay, this isn't young Bill, this is advanced Bill. This is I'm sipping bourbon, not shooting bourbon Bill. People look at this guy and have bad memories associated with it and they pass it by. Well, you don't need to do that. Six to eight years old, 101 proof. You're starting to get away from the sweetness that we're getting on some of the other ones. This is higher rye, it's a bit spicier. You start getting this Rick House musky, deliciousness going on with it. It's super cheap. I've seen people post pictures of this stupid cheap prices. It's just really good product that I think a lot of people just kind of pass by because of their past bad moments, okay? We all had them. If you had the 101, you say, whoa, that's what I'm talking about. Not overly sweet, right about a spice. Where do I go from there? And I'm gonna recommend you Wild Turkey Rare Breed. This time, a barrel proof product. Again, I would not say this is a beginner bottle. Do not get me wrong. This is more of the stepping stone bottle from the beginner stuff. So if you're getting used to drinking 101, 100 proof stuff, and you say, okay, where do I go from here? I'm, I want to expand. I want to I wanna get a little braver. This is definitely the next stop to go to. It's 116.8 proof. So it's not going to melt your face off, okay? It's an approachable barrel proof. It'll get you used to barrel proof. It'll get you adjusted. It's full of flavor. It's amazing value, okay? This is easily one of the most affordable barrel proofs on the shelf. You can get it pretty much anywhere. I know that sometimes it comes and goes in some places, but for the most part, you should be able to get this guy with relative ease, not for beginners, but more so as a stepping stone of where to go next. Again, stepping stone. Don't go straight to this guy. You might have a bad day. There we go. That was my list. Few honorable mentions, okay? So I wanted to put things on here like Buffalo Trace and Eagle Rare. The reason I didn't is because in my area, they are impossible to find. But I will say, if you can find them, definitely add that to your list. Buffalo Trace in particular was the bottle that got me into bourbon. That's what hooked me. I'm just a little fish swimming in the bourbon sea, and bam, it got me. It's definitely a good gateway bourbon. It's super sweet, tons of cherry. It's the perfect bottle to say, hey, this is what Buffalo Trace Distillery is all about. This is a good segue into, this isn't the list. These are just helpful bottles that help guide you my recommendation. And if you didn't listen to anything else in this video, you need to listen to this. My recommendation is to try as many bottles as you can. When you're starting out, go to the store, buy a bottle you haven't tried before. When you go back, when you need a new bottle, try a different one. If you said, whoa, I really liked that Maker's Mark, maybe you should try another Maker's product or maybe go to an Old Forester product. They're both sweet. You can see, okay, I like their sweetness or I don't. Or if you want to be adventurous, say, okay, that was a sweet one. Let me go to Wild Turkey. Get some of that spiciness going on. See what that's all about. Like I said, this is a long journey. There are tons and tons of amazing whiskeys that are on the shelf and affordable. Develop your own palate. Develop your flavor profile. See what you like. See what you agree with. Learn yourself. Try yourself. See what you like. See the bottles that you agree with. It's a fun journey. Try as many as you can. Make friends along the way. Share bottles with each other. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. I get back to literally every comment I get. I try and respond to everyone. So if you have questions about bottles to try next, 
or bottles I mentioned, whatever the case may be, drop a comment below. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, make sure to hit the bell notification, be notified when I drop other videos, when I go live. Until next time guys, take it easy, I love you guys. I'm Trev Wilson, I will see you in the next one. What's up patrons? Good to see you here at the end of the friggin' video. You stuck around all the way to the end. You're delusional. You're just downright insane. Thank you again for supporting me, for choosing to support me, to just loving me. Because listen here, I love you more than I love Maker's Mark. And that's a statement that I didn't think I would ever say, but guess what? It's true.